Hello, it's day six of celebrating Becoming Heather. Today I'm going to read from chapter 23. The, in the last chapter, Heather was visiting her parents, and then in this chapter, she has gone with the Scarlets to visit some of their relatives. After a big New Year's Day brunch at Warren and Carol's, Heather took her charges outside to see Carol's greenhouse. Carol had been generous enough to give them permission to take a peek. The little group moved through the rows and examined the pots and boxes which were full of flowers and vegetables. Timothy brought Heather a large grasshopper. She grimaced and pushed it away. Isn't it pretty? he asked. No, it's gross, she told him. It's not gross, he insisted as if offended. What are you going to do with it? she inquired. I'm going to give to Juliana. She's pretty. I'm going to marry her. Heather smiled at his adorable comments. You can't marry Juliana, she corrected him. She's your cousin. You can't marry your cousin. What's a cousin? he asked. Heather thought about it for a moment before answering. Well, do you know what an uncle is? He nodded. Uncle Edward is my uncle because he's dad's brother. Yes, and a cousin is your uncle's son or daughter, or grandson or granddaughter. Juliana is your uncle Spencer's granddaughter, so she is your cousin. Oh, he said in a dejected tone. I guess I'll let my grasshopper go then. He opened his hand and the insect jumped out of it. Mary, who had been listening, asked, Are we all cousins? Ben told me we're all cousins. Well, we are to some degree because we are all descended from Noah, but at some point, so at some point we have the same grandparents, but we aren't very closely related. So you're our cousin? asked Timothy. Yep, I'm your cousin. Well, then I guess I can't marry you either, he sighed. Heather smiled but did not bother explaining it to him. He was too young to really understand it anyway. Genealogy was a complicated subject. Heather herded the kids out of the greenhouse. I'm cold, complained Dahlia. Mary shivered and agreed. What do you think of winter? asked the nanny, looking up at the gray sky and breathing in the fresh air. It's not very fun, declared Mary. Yeah, I want to go home, said Dahlia. When can we go home? In two days, Heather informed them, feeling a little disappointed in their response. I wish it was today, said Isaac. John probably misses me. I'm sure Margaret is taking care of him. Don't you want to play with your cousin some more? I thought Tyler was your friend. He is, but I miss John. They entered the house, and Heather helped the children take off their coats and gloves. How did you like my greenhouse? asked their grandmother. The flowers were pretty, Dada told her, but why do you keep them in a little house and not outside? Her grandmother laughed. It's too cold for them in the winter. It's too cold in the winter for the flowers, so they need a house to keep them warm, just like we do. How about some hot chocolate to warm you up? Do you give your flowers hot chocolate? asked Timothy. I've never tried that, answered Carol. Maybe I should. I think you should, Timothy told her seriously. Well, for right now, let's just get some for you, she chuckled and ushered the kids into the kitchen. Skipping ahead a little bit. Is that snow? cried Katie from across the room. The teenagers rushed to the windows while the adults watched with interest. A few feathery flurries were falling from the dark sky. They floated this way and that, as if in no hurry to reach the ground. It is snow, announced Katie. I hope we get enough to play in. The afternoon passed and dinner time neared. Heather went into the kitchen to see if Carol needed help. Glancing out the window, she noticed that the snow stood three inches thick on the porch railing. Look at that, she exclaimed. Carol and her grandchildren, who had been cutting out cookies, looked up in surprise. What's that? asked the grandmother. The snow is already a few inches thick and it's still coming down heavy. It's snowing? asked Isaac. The children all crowded around the win kitchen window. What is it? whispered Diane in awe. It's snow, laughed Heather. <laughs> Have you ever seen snow before? The little girl shook her head. Let's go outside, begged Mary, running to get her coat. Not right now, Mary, said the nanny. We'll go out and play in it tomorrow. Maybe there will be even more by that time. Come fin finish cutting the cookies, suggested Carol. The children obeyed and soon forgot their disappointment. And skipping ahead a little bit more. Uh, the moment she finished her breakfast, this is the next morning, Heather thanked the cook and began zipping up coats and pulling on gloves. When all the children were ready, she opened the door for a, the long line of colorful marshmallows behind her. The l youngest Scarlets touched the snow in awe. Rose shoved some in her mouth and then cried, COLD! A snowball whizzed by and hit Mary in the head. Ow! she moaned, looking round. It was obvious from Ben's expression that he had thrown it. He hit me, Mary complained. Heather explained that the best thing to do in this circumstance was to hit him back. She taught Mary and the children how, around her how to make snowballs. The snow was just wet enough. 
They packed and molded until Heather told them they had done a good job. Following their leader, they snuck up on the unsuspecting Ben, who was now creating a snow angel, and tossed the snowballs on top of him. He was covered in the white powder when they finished. The attackers la laughed in glee and hurried to grab more snow. Ben was soon doing the same, and snowballs flew back and forth between them all. Heather was closest to the house. She had paused to watch Olivia, who was scooping snow into her mouth, when she felt something strike her back. She s swung around in surprise and found the adult standing behind her in full winter garb. Rick was standing in front, and she flung at him the snowball she had in her hand. Ouch! She complained. It wasn't me. It was Edward. It was Edward, agreed Rachel. Oh, Heather murmured with an embarrassed smile. Sorry. Another snowball slammed into her arm. She looked at Edward, who was brushing the snow from his gloves. Oh, it's on, she declared. She scooped up some snow and packed it into a ball, threw it, and missed. Frustrated yet enjoying herself, she reached down for more snow. As she straightened, she saw Edward coming toward her. He was carrying a large chunk of snow. She squealed and ran away, but he chased her. She saw him closing in and protected her face just in time. He dropped it on her head. With another squeal, she fell to the ground, cold and wet. A grunt followed, and Edward landed next to her. Ow, he groaned. Didn't see that stuff. Heather giggled. Serves you right. Ow, not really, Heather. His voice was choked with pain, and Heather realized he was serious. What's wrong? I don't know. I think it's my arms. Heather's heartbeat quickened. I'll go get Rick, she whispered. No, he insisted between clenched teeth. Come here. She leaned over him. What? Her concern was rewarded with an armful of snow right in her face. Edward rolled out from under her, laughing at his joke. Heather's face burned from the cold. She wiped the snow from her face as best she could. That wasn't funny, she told him, with all the sternness she could muster. His face softened. I'm sorry, that was mean. He walked toward her, saying, Madam, I offer you my face for revenge. She smiled, but knew she could not do it. That's okay, I forgive you. Are you sure? It is tempting, but how about we just make a snowman? How about we make an army of snowmen? Attention, he called. All eyes turned to him, and he barked out orders like a drill sergeant. Line up and listen hard. We've got work to do. Each and every one of you is going to roll the biggest snowball you can. We will assemble the longest line of snowmen on the block. Go, go, go. Get moving. Roll those snowballs. The Allen's yard was nearly bare when they finished. The snowmen stood in a row facing the road. Each had a face of rocks with a carrot nose, stick arms, and some kind of covering for its head. Once the project was finished, they went inside to get warm. Carol made them hot drinks and the children told her about their snowmen. Heather listened to the children's chatter and was delighted to hear how much they had enjoyed playing in the snow. She wondered if they would be ready to leave the next morning. She knew she would not be, but she shrugged the thought aside and determined to enjoy her remaining time with the Allens. That's all for tonight. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>